So let's talk about electric vehicle charging. Almost every vehicle on the market today will come with some sort of cord to charge the vehicle. My Bolt, it came with this 120 volt charger. Uh, it has a J1772 type one plug on the end. And essentially you just plug this into a NEMA 515 outlet, which is a 120 volt 15 amp outlet here in the US. And it'll give you about three to five miles of range an hour, which isn't great. So I upgraded. I upgraded to this unit. This is a Primecon, Primecom Tech charger. And this is capable of up to 32 amps at 240 volts. That'll give you 7.7 .7 kilowatts of charging. And it has a NEMA 1450 plug to accomplish that. And it's much thicker wire, uh, uses the same J1772 type one connector. Uh, but otherwise a much more powerful unit than what came with the vehicle. Uh, it does have the ability to change the charge rate by changing the current that is supplied to the vehicle. And this is important because while you have a plug here that is capable of up to 50 amps, you can adapt this plug. So for instance, here is an adapter that I have that goes from a NEMA 620 which is a 20 amp, 240 volt outlet to the NEMA 1450. And that will connect right into this charger. But if I do that, and this is plugged into a 20 amp circuit, and I do not turn this down to 16 amps charging to the vehicle, you'll be popping the circuit breaker every time. Now, a quick note, I turned it down to 16 amps, not 20, because you are only supposed to use 80% of the max rated current of the circuit. So I have a system, but it's complicated as you can see. And there's a lot going on here. And it, depending on what adapters you use, you have to remember to derate and you're just carrying around a lot of equipment in your trunk at all times to plug into all sorts of different outlets. And then I came across something that I just frankly thought was amazing at first. Now, Tesla owners, you can probably zone out and just ignore this video because you've known this for a long time, but this Tesla mobile connector, I find is amazing. Uh, it's an incredibly tiny unit. You can see this is seven inch by three and a quarter inch across. The cord is just over half an inch uh, diameter, but this can still supply up to 32 amps of power. Same as the, the other unit. It has the connection to the car on the end of that cord. And then on the other end of the brick, you have this little uh, proprietary socket. This is for adapters. So Tesla sells, I think it's eight of these different adapters for different plug types. So this is a NEMA 1430. Uh, it's for a 240 volt, 30 amp circuit. Uh, you typically see this for dryers and things like that. Plug that into the unit, you're ready to go. Say you have a different situation. Here's that NEMA 620 I talked about earlier. Now we're good to go on a 20 amp circuit. But you say, what about the D-rate? Well, this unit does not have a button to D-rate. Uh, I cannot D-rate in my particular car. You can in a Tesla, but you gotta change that in the car. So what does it do? Well, there's a special communication protocol between these adapters and the unit that says, D rate to 16 amps, it's a 20 amp circuit, and it will do that. You swap this out, <laughs> they're a little tight. You swap it out <clears throat> for the 30 amper, it'll D rate to 24 amps. Tesla provides eight of these units, and then there's more available in the aftermarket. You should check out evseadapters.com to see those. You can pretty much find any plug that you want for this EVSC. So it's an incredibly compact unit. It has built-in D-rate that you don't even have to think about. You don't have to carry extra adapters to adapt to the charger. You just have to have these adapters into the charger. And uh, just the, the size of it is just brilliant. The problem is the connection. In the US, we have Tesla's proprietary connector. This is not that. This is the European standard 
for all vehicles. It's called Type 2. Same communication protocol, different plug. So I found this unit on eBay for just over $100. And I thought, I'm just gonna lop off this end and throw on our American J1772 Type 1. I cut the cord off as close to the connector as I could, and it was pretty thick, so it was a little tough to get through. Inside the cord, there's two lines for the power and then a ground wire, a communication pilot, which is purple, and that's for the signal to the car, and temperature monitoring, which is white. I stripped back the cable uh, to an appropriate length for my J1772 Type 1 connector, and then carefully peeled the cable off. The grommet on my connector slips over the cable first. Uh, this ended up being kind of loose. So I had to deal with that so that we didn't have water running into the system. The way I dealt with that was I put a piece of shrink tube down over the cable at the appropriate location and then shrank it over the tube with my heat gun. I put a second piece of shrink tube over it to make it thick enough for the grommet. With the shrink tube all shrunk nicely, I could pull the grommet up over that and you can see it fit quite snugly uh, over the shrink tube and seals everything up nicely. Next, I prepared a blue wire for the control pilot signal through the connector and an orange wire for the proximity detection system on the connector. I pushed the wires through the back plate of the internal barrel of the connector, uh, pushed the orange wire for the proximity detection through, and then since I had already stripped the wires, I put some pieces of shrink tube on them to go through this rubber sealing grommet. I found that this worked pretty well to push the wires through without all the wires fraying out. Obviously strip after you put through is the best way to do this. I ran a ground wire through as well and tied this to the existing ground. This ground is used for the temperature detection as well as the opposite side of the proximity detection system. There's also this secondary plastic grommet that goes through after the rubber grommet and then you have all of your grommets in place. At this point, with all the wires stripped back, we could fit the pins. So I just fitted the ground pin. Here is the line two pin and then the line one pin on the brown. With the pins all fitted, we can move on to the crimping. To crimp, I used a mil-spec pneumatic crimper. Now this is not an inexpensive crimper, but it does a really nice job for this work. I have a specific insert that I 3D printed out for my connectors, and then you put in the die for a number 10 connection, tighten everything up, put your pins into the crimper, put the wire into the pin, and you are ready to crimp. And that's pretty much all there is to it, and you're left with a really amazing good crimp. Now, you could solder these, you could use a different crimper, but it's not going to do near as nice a job as this crimper will, uh, but you can do it different ways. However you do it, it is critical that these connections are done correctly because you have 32 amps of power running through these pins continuously. Next, I changed over my die to a number 12 die, put in my pins for the comm cables, and crimped those on in a similar way to how I did the lines and the ground. And with that, I had all five pins crimped onto the unit. It was just a matter of sliding everything up the wire so that everything fit in nicely. To override the temperature sensor in the previous Tesla handle, I crimped a 10K ohm resistor to the white wire, and we'll deal with this in a future step. Next, I fitted everything together through the front end of the J1772 Type 1 barrel and screwed that in. With that screw tightened, you could slip the rubber grommet down into the barrel to seal everything up better and then fasten the rear plastic piece with the three screws that came with that. You can see how everything fits into the handle and I pre-fit everything just to make sure everything was lining up well. The blue wire gets crimped to the purple wire and this makes a communication link between the charger and the car. Next, I added some shrink tube over the resistor and crimped the resistor to the ground, as I previously mentioned, as well as the opposite side of the proximity uh, switch. 
and then I crimped the other side of the proximity switch to the orange wire. And after it was all crimped, I sealed everything up with a marine grade shrink tube, which has a special sealant on it to keep moisture out of these uh, fittings. With all the wires sealed off, they're set into the plastic housing of the plug, and then the wire is secured with the attached uh, securing clamp, and everything fits in nicely with some room to spare. The final bit is to put back in the plug cap and put the other half of the housing on and screw them together, and you are finished with this build. So here it is, my Tesla mobile connector with the J1772 Type 1 plug. And honestly, I'm impressed that it actually turned out and it works. Uh, granted, I did use some crazy expensive tools in there. So uh, if this is something you would like to do, hit me up, maybe we can work something out. Overall, I, I love the thing. It uh, works just as expected. When I plug in my 520, 20 amp, 120 volt plug, uh, it charges up to 16 amps, sorta, more in a bit. When I do the 30 amp 1430 plug, it'll charge up to 24 amps, which is what I expected. Uh, back to the 120 volt plug. My Chevy Bolt actually caps 120 charging at 12 amps. And although the Tesla charger will allow up to 16 amps with this plug, the car, when it sees the 120, it only pulls 12, a uh, maximum of 12. And so I really can't get the full capacity of this plug and I should probably switch over to the 515, which is the 15 amp version of this. It gives me more options. But really I, I have so many options now uh, because I have all eight of Tesla's adapters I can use as well as the aftermarket adapters that are out there online. Should you do this? Maybe, if you really want to. Uh, like I said, hit me up if you're, you're interested in something. Maybe we can work something out. Uh, but really, instead of doing this, uh, I would kind of recommend using the American Tesla mobile connector, which has the regular Tesla plug on the end, and then using an adapter like this. So this is produced by Electron. Uh, it's essentially a Tesla adapter to J1772 Type 1. This would allow you to charge off the universal mobile connector or a Tesla destination charger like this, uh, and that would give you even more options when you're out in the world. So that's what I would recommend, something like this. There's also a smaller one called a Tesla Tap, and I believe Lectron even has a smaller version now too. So that pretty much wraps this up. I had fun making this thing. Hopefully you learned a little bit, and I will see you in the next one.